awesome, absolutely awesome. I love it when a plan comes together. Definitely worth a look. The, um, yeah, it was well on par. In brightest day, in blackest night, all that sort of stuff. Children, children, children. Let me just say right now, Green Lantern, it just, nah. We, we all knew that it wasn't really gonna, yeah, it wasn't gonna live up to the hype. Not that there was any hype to begin with. And we all know why said hype wasn't hype enough. And that was pretty much down to the casting choices. Um, two in particular, Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively. Um, let me first start with Ryan Reynolds. We all know that he should have been The Flash, a.k.a. Wally West. That's simple as, okay? Um, Blake Lively, she's beautiful, but my God, poor lass. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Um... Just going back to Ryan Reynolds, he, you know, he is a funny guy. He really is a funny guy. Um, and I've spoken to a number of people regarding the choice of him playing Hal Jordan, and he is just not Hal Jordan. He does an okay job, but not a brilliant job. Okay, um, he just it wasn't Hal Jordan for me at all. You know, I I had my reservations, but I thought to myself, no, I'll keep it till the movie. Um, my expectations were low. And they've they've gone up a little bit, but not too much. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but let's get on to the film itself. Um, effects wise, really good. I have to say the suit really does work. Um, the way that the suit appears on on uh, on Hal Jordan, it actually does work, and you actually see it on other characters as well, like Kilowog, Tomare, um, Abinsur, and also Sinestro. Because um, obviously, it's all about energy. It uses energy and it really does have an awesome look to it when when you watch it on film it really does look different to what you've seen in pictures and stuff like that um, the way that they've created Oa again really good I still think it should have been on a bigger scale kind of like what Asgard was on Thor um, because Asgard was beautiful whereas Oa it just it didn't really look like the center of the universe at all um, the storyline as well it was weak. <laughs> it really was actually quite weak. I'm sorry to say, it really was. I'm going to say this right now. There's, you'll have three different type of people going to see this movie. You'll have your comic book geeks. You'll have your Ryan Reynolds fan, and then the people who are just not a Ryan Reynolds fan or a comic book geek. And all I can say is right now that if you really, really want to know about Green Lantern, about Hal Jordan, about how he becomes the world's great, you know, the, the, the greatest lantern ever and everything like that, I suggest that you read the comics, particularly Secret Origin, Rebirth, No Fear, and then watch two animated movies, First Flight and Emerald Knights. I think that's pretty much all you need. And then after all that, get onto the Blackest Night, Brightest, well, Blackest Night really is all you need to get onto after all of that. Um, yeah, all I can, all, all I'll say as well, Angela Bassett was immensely underused. Um, so was Peter Sarsgaard as Hector Hammond. Um, both, both of them were hugely underused. Um, as I say, Blake Lively as Carol Ferris, it just didn't work. Um, there were some nods to her character you know, for st like Star Sapphire, her, um, we all know that Hal Jordan's nickname is Highball and Carol Ferris's nickname in this case was Sapphire. So there was that nod towards her becoming the, you know, a member of the Sapphire Lanterns. Um, only true comic book geeks will know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and Mark Strong, I must say, I was actually quite pleased with Mark Strong's performance as Sinestro, although again, not enough of his character was used. Um, stay if you, if you do go and see this movie, I will say stay until the credits, um, or the, at least the first set of credits at the end of the film. Um, there was a you know tease to say that a sequel is coming. We already know that a sequel is being done because they've pretty much announced that they were going to do a sequel. Um, but all in all, this kind of reminded me of when I went to see the first Iron Man movie. Um, it was kind of like a, just a huge trailer. 
for the second one because I enjoyed the second one better than I did the first one and something tells me that when the sequel for Green Lantern comes along I'm probably going to enjoy that more than the first one but what I hope to happen in the second one is A get rid of Blake Lively if you're going to cast someone as Carol Ferris bring in Olivia Wilde that's all I'm going to say I think Olivia Wilde would have nailed Blake Ly uh, Carol Ferris pretty well um, make how if you're gonna obviously you're gonna reuse Ryan Reynolds I would I would state that you need to don't make him too comical because there were some comical moments you know we do know that that Hal is arrogant and all that sort of stuff but in some ways Ryan was just he was good but as I say he is not Hal Jordan um what else yeah there's Kilowog was voiced by uh, Michael Clark Duncan and I was actually impressed with that because all I wanted to hear was him say the word Poozer. I love when Kilowog says that word. Poozer is just like, I'm going to start using that from now on. I'm just going to go around and start randomly calling people Poozers because it is an awesome word. Um, Tomar Ray was voiced by Jeffrey Rush and um, Tamura uh, Morrison uh, was Abin Sir and Again, I think that was a miscast as well. I still think someone you could have had someone else as Abin Sir. Um, I think just everything about it. I think from a comic book geek's point of view, watching that film, you're thinking to yourself, "Oh my God, what have you done?" I know where they're going with it, but a lot of the characters were so underused; it just wasn't even funny. I, th I think there were some characters that probably shouldn't have been in the film probably even Amanda Waller didn't need to be present because as I say she was so underused I don't think there was any need for Amanda Waller to even be in the film um, yeah <laughs> you know and Parallax as well is the evil entity you know the way that the storyline had changed from what I've read in the comics it yeah certain elements were just not right about it um, the Guardians you know they, they look pretty cool they did um, but yeah, I'm not going to say go and see it because oh, I can't say go and see it. But if you do decide to see it, if you do go and see it, as I say, stay until the first set of credits roll. Because there is a section, there is there is a quite, quite a tidbit as it were. But as a comic book geek, I just wasn't satisfied. It lacked, it literally lacked that true comic book movie essence. You know, films like Thor, X-Men First Class, The Dark Knight, they all had that true comic book essence. Green Lantern just didn't have it at all. Sorry to say, you know, Jeff Johns, I know you are pretty much the master creator for re-imagining uh, Green Lantern and bringing him to everybody's attention. But I think the film just didn't... I don't think it's going to draw that many people into the character, um, you know... For, you know, a lot of people who may not know, who won't know who Green Lantern is, when they see this film, they're going to think, "Who?" You know, um, if you've read the comics and you know who Green Lantern is, I can honestly say that you will be coming out of the cinema going, "Meh," just be going, "Eh, okay, right." And the other thing that I'm thinking, especially the fact that they're going to go for a sequel, I think that even the sequel itself is going to point towards the Justice League movie that they want to do. I think that Green Lantern is pretty much going to be their platform for the Justice League movie. Um, and the sequel will probably be going towards that. I can't say that's the, that will be that's what's going to happen, but that's what I feel. Because um, we know that The Dark Knight Rises and Superman Man of Steel, according to both Nolan and Snyder, both of those films are separate. So is Green Lantern going to be the platform? Is it going to be the starting point? Is the sequel going to move towards the Justice League movie? Who knows? But all in all, just, yeah, I just came out of the cinema thinking, all right, yeah, okay, what am I supposed to do? You know, so let me know what you thought of it, if you've seen it. Um, those of you who haven't seen it, as I say, if you want to go and see it, by all means do. Um, it just it didn't grab me whatsoever if I had never read about Green Lantern before and I went to see this film based on the fact that it was a superhero movie it was a you know 
that kind of genre I would have probably come out thinking what was that and then you'd then get me to start reading I'll probably start reading the comics and think ah oh, so this is who Green Lantern actually is not what we saw in the, in, in the cinema so yeah it kind of gives you that mm, not too sure if I should read about this character should I know more about him kind of thing but believe me when I say Secret Origin, No Fear, Rebirth, First Flight, Emerald Knights, that's pretty much all you need. That's all I'm going to say. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all later. Bye.